Hello, everybody, and thanks for checking out my review of the GSW H1000 1CR, Casio's first G-Shock smartwatch. I want to thank Topper Jewelers for sending this out to me for review. If you purchase at Topper Jewelers, please add Doug FNJ sent me in comments at checkout. Now, Casio started innovating years ago, pushing limits with what they could do with watches. My very first Casio was a data bank calculator watch years ago. It allowed contacts, calendar events, alarms, stopwatch, and countdown timer, and that was back in the 80s. They ended up developing a stronger watch, obviously, with the G-Shock lineup, and they added more features over the years with the Master of G-Series. Now, they started the Pathfinder slash Protrek line, giving us altimeter, barometer, compass, and thermometer, and then they merged those features into the Riseman. They went a step further and added a GPS with the Range Man, followed by adding smartphone-like notifications, heart rate, and activity features to the GBD H1000. Many G-Shocks now sync with smartphones, but they could not really be considered a smartwatch for obvious reasons. Now, a few years ago, Protrek did come out with a smartwatch with Wear OS. The platform was fairly new at the time, and you didn't get the same resistance with the shock and the protections that you're going to be getting with this G-Shock. Casio is now taking a smartwatch to another level, finally offering a smart G-Shock, a Wear OS watch with 200 meter water resistance, the classic shock resistance. This is a lot of watch in a size similar to the GBD H1000. All right, so getting into the box, as you can see, it's a plain black box with the Wear OS by Google on the bottom here and the screen of the G-Shock, of course. You have the G-Shock logo, once again, with the Wear OS GSW H1000 here. You have your barcode and your information over on the bottom of the box and more G-Shock logos on the front. Opening it up, it's a simple black box with shock resistance, the G-Shock logo, more information on the barcode, same as the outer box. And going into the box itself, I'll get into this in a moment. And going into underneath, you have a little barcode here that uh, just talks about some videos that they'll give you some tutorials. You have your instruction manual. These are going to be simple instructions though because you're going to primarily find your information online of course. You have a charging cord and this one works magnetically on the side of the watch. And then of course you have the watch. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just a physical walkthrough real quick for you. So on the back, it's stainless steel. It's got the heart rate monitor underneath. It's put together with screws, so it's not a screw down. Uh, you have the big thick wings here, and that does make it easier to size to your wrist. The straps are pretty beefy. They of course got the two holes here, so this way it stays nice and secure. So it is a solid build. So. Being a G-Shock and a smartwatch, that's where it gets interesting. Now, the charging is on the side here, and that looks like it can end up being open to vulnerability. I'm surprised they didn't give some kind of a cap. But basically, this is how you plug it in. It looks like it's pretty much magnetic. It charges up, so right now it's at 85%. So these typically charge up pretty quick. You have your sensor here on the left. I guess that's the uh, altimeter, barometer, and temperature sensor. Uh, this is just a spot, I guess, that if they had a button, they'd put it there, but there is not. But it looks like it's pretty easy to access, pretty easy to open. Uh, it's gunmetal and the color blue on the button up here and the writing. And, of course, the wings. Other than that, it's pretty much a black watch. So the keeper here, the buckle, is plastic with steel on the middle. And the keeper is a pretty stiff rubber here. So that's the physical walkthrough. All right, so now to get you a little closer on the screen here, uh, the first thing I'm gonna show off is the monochrome screen. So this is a screen that's going to get you a lot more battery life. It can get you up to three to five days on normal use. Then there's also a power saving function that can get you even up to 30 days. Uh, so it's basically a top layer of the screen and you could choose for it to be the negative display like it is right now. And this is what it looks like on the positive display. The nice thing is both of these displays pretty much give you the same brightness that you're gonna get or the same legibility that you're gonna get on all regular G-Shocks as well. 
So now to get out of this screen and get into the regular display, all you have to do is touch the screen and then you have choices on the different types of faces that you want to play with. So if I touch in there and I push the screen down, I have the digital, two layer, analog, and a Google Fit screen. So going into the digital, I have three layers of the screen as you can see here, and there's multiple ways to play around with the settings. So if I wanted to play into the top layer here, I just have to touch it, and then I have my choices on what types of settings that I want to play around with here. So you have a barometer, you have the current time, you have a calories burn screen, battery level, and then you could do the same with the bottom here. So you could choose tide graph, calories burned, heart rate, step counter, schedule, so I could look at my calendar appointments, and then the current time as well. And then I could do the same with the center part of the screen here too. So if I wanted to look into current time, world time, the regular clock, heart rate, a lot of information I could display on all three of those levels. And then I can go one step further, pushing the screen and touch the little gear here. And that's going to take me into another layer of settings. So I can go in and I could change the color of the theme. So if I didn't like the green color that was in there, I can go into red. And then I can go into how I want the background of the display to look. So I have camouflage, octagon, a wave. I have mapping that I could do either black, I could do it white, or just a black screen in the background. So once I have that set, I can go into my indicators and I could choose for an always on. I could have it blink or I could have it off altogether. Daily location. So I have a choice of putting the daily location to save it periodically every 10 minutes is going to consume more battery power because it's using the onboard GPS. You have the daily heart rate measurement. You can turn that on. And the same deal, it affects the battery life the more you use it. You have the map app. And that's going to choose on what map I want to use. You have your heart rate sensor, and that's where I could set my date of birth, the heart rate, my gender, my height, my weight, total maximum heart rate. I have the magnetic compass calibration. I have the altitude calibration. I have the barometer calibration. And a lot of these I could just use the GPS to calibrate too. This is where I was able to change it from the monochrome uh, positive or the negative. So it comes across as bright or dark. Then I have my tide graph. Now this is really nice because I can go in and I could set it up for whatever country I'm in. So if I go into North America, I could choose USA or Canada. And then I can go into the different states. And this way I can go into pretty much wherever I want that tide reading to show me. So if I go into New Jersey, I can go to all the different shore areas in New Jersey. And then that's set up. Now I can have the GPS give me the time calibration or I can have it go automatically with my smartphone, of course. I have the units, which is imperial or metric. So imperial obviously is for U.S., Energy consumption is for how I want it to read for my health meters. And then I could choose which wrist I'm wearing the watch on. So I wear it on my right because I'm lefty. So then I go back, I just press the middle button here, and now I'm back to my screen. Now the two layer is not as configurable as the digital. I mean, basically this is going to give you some basic information. And if I wanted to check my heart rate, I just touch the screen and it'll start a heart rate measurement. And the settings are pretty much the same as well. So I go in there, I press the little gear on the bottom. And it's pretty much the same settings that I did before.
Now the analog is also not as configurable as the first one, but basically I can go in and I press on the gear and this will allow me to set the theme color of course. Uh, the dial content is what I'm able to change on here. Now I can also go in and I could change for the digital time or analog only. And that's the main stuff I'm able to play with really on the analog version of the watch face here. Then I go back in and then I have the Google Fit face and that is has similar rings to what an Apple Watch has. And then of course I could configure the two sub dials that we have here. And I do that by pressing on the screen. I go into the gear and it's going to allow me to change what those sub dials read off. So for instance, if I wanted to show weather here, and then I can change the right one. So in that case, I could do the calendar. And that's it for the uh, watch screens that come on the watch. All right, just like smartphones, watch manufacturers usually put their own flavor into the smartwatch platform and Wear OS watches. So Casio, of course, did the same thing. So what you want to do is to get into their platform, you press the apps button on the bottom right hand screen here, and you'd be given your own menu. So going into the menu system, you can either change it using your finger, or you could just scroll through it using the app button on the bottom here. And you have a bunch of different options and things that you could play around with. So for instance, if I go into tide graph, this is something that I set up in the settings on the face earlier. And this is going to give me the tide graph of the area that I'm looking for. And I go into the timepiece, and this allows me to choose to go into a power save mode where it's only going to use that monochrome screen. I go back in and I have what's called a sensor overlay. Now, if you go to Casio's website or do a Google search, you can see specifically a video that they put together that kind of explains it. But basically, the way it works is you're doing a videotape of yourself and then it's using the sensors that it's, you know, like the heart rate and the weather to overlay over the screen of the activity. It's kind of a silly little feature there, but uh, I guess if you're very active, some people do use it, of course. And we go into the heart rate graph. So that's obviously when you're wearing the watch, it keeps track of your heart rate. And then you have your mapping system, which is Google Maps, of course. And it's actually pretty responsive. So the GPS picks up where you're at, and then you can basically move it around the screen. And you can get yourself directions, and it's a nice layout there. You have your theme color also found in the face menu there. Uh, watch face background. You have your history, and that goes back into the activities that you've done. You have getting into the activity, so all you have to do is press the screen here, and the little button here, this tells you what you're in. So right now it's currently in the sensor overlay, but if I just wanted to go into bicycling, for instance, I get into there, I press the start, and I could either wait for the GPS to generate, or I could just start it right now. It gives me a little countdown, and then it starts all of the activity monitoring. And if I want to get back in, I stop it. And it gives me the information I need in that history. And I, of course, have the G-Shock Move, which this is what syncs up with the smartphone. I have the Compass, which is also very responsive. I have the barometer when the pressure in the atmosphere is moving up or down. I have my altimeter, so this way if I'm doing a lot of hiking, and I could put that in either meters or feet. And then back to that sensor overlay.
So that's the flavors that Casio puts together in their own menu system. Then, of course, you have your regular Wear OS apps and settings. And, of course, if you go to my Wear OS tutorial, I'll walk you through everything with a lot more in-depth. But basically, the top section shows you your recent applications that you've been in. So you get your settings, you have your activity, agenda, alarms, Casio apps, contacts, find my... Again, the same applications that you're going to get on most Wear OS watches, and then you get a couple of Casio applications in the middle. In some cases, what they do is they put their own overlay on stuff, but, you know, each manufacturer, like I said, they add their own personality into the watch, and then, of course, you know, you have your, your basic Wear OS foundation to kind of make it work. All right, so now I'm going to do a quick comparison. All right, so uh, I'm going to start it off with the other H1000. And as you can see, this is probably going to be the closest comparison. So if you don't have access to the smartwatch, but you have access to the H1000 with the heart rate, that's going to be your, if, if, you, if you're comfortable with the fit on that, you're going to be very comfortable with the fit on this. They both have the heart rate. They both have the same build quality on the back. I mean, very similar build quality on both of these. The height, the smartwatch is a little bit thicker. So that's what you're looking at as far as a size comparison with both of the H1000s. Both of them are extremely both of them are extremely legible and easy to read. And we're going to go with the big boy, the Rangeman. And the Rangeman is definitely larger, thicker. It's heavier. The straps are thicker, like more uh, less flexible. And then we're going to go with the old classic. And of course, smartwatch is going to be larger. Two different types of watches, though. I mean, you're getting collectors that would get both of these. But again, just giving you a size comparison. And go with the Apple Watch. Also a big difference between the two. This is the 44 millimeter version, stainless steel, Hermes. Two different experiences, of course. And then we go with the Mobvoi Tick Watch. And I'm looking forward to doing a really good comparison with this one because they have the similar type of screens. The only difference is, and here we got another update going here. The only big difference is, is of course, obviously the watch size. I mean, you know, the G-Shock is going to be much thicker, but of course it's more rugged. I mean, it's meant to take abuse. Obviously the Mobvoi has a different processor in there. But they both also have the monochrome screen. So that's the comparison just from a size standpoint of what you're looking at there. And here's a quick wrist shot. Seven and a half inch wrists. I think it fits really well. But keep in mind I like wearing the range man as well. So I'd like a larger size watch. That's why I like to do those comparisons and the wrist shot so this way you really get an idea on how these fit but to me I like the flexibility it, it is a comfortable watch this is something I could definitely see myself wearing it just comes down to the battery life and how well it integrates with my iPhone so I've had about a week to play around with this watch and it's really not a bad experience, but it's not great either. It, it, it's definitely, it, it, it could definitely use a couple more updates. It could, it, it could definitely improve for sure. The good thing about a smartwatch using the Casio applications is, you know, especially with the barometer, the altimeter, the ABC settings, they're a lot more in depth than what you're typically getting from a regular ABC watch with a Pathfinder, ProTrek, or, you know, one of the uh, Casio uh, sensor watches that they put out there. That's the good thing. The bad thing is it's a little clunky. Uh, sometimes it's not as responsive as it should be. Sometimes it could just be a little slow. It, it needs some work. 
Overall, would I keep this watch? Absolutely. I, I definitely am happy to have finally a smartwatch that has the shock resistance. It's great to have one that has this water resistance. You know, you could take this camping, you could take this anywhere, you can make the battery last a lot longer. So I do definitely think that it's one of the better Wear OS watches out there. Uh, but I, I really wish that they put the 4100 chip in here to make it quicker, to make it last longer on, on the battery life without having to use those settings to make that happen. But in the end, I do like it. It's nice to have a smartwatch with these features. I, I just can't say that enough. All right, so I want to thank you again for watching this review. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified of future reviews. And please, by all means, leave a comment. If you have any feedback, if you have any questions, I'm always happy to reply, and I always appreciate the feedback. Thanks so much. And you can also find me on Twitter at DougFNJ. I want to thank Topper Jewelers once again for sending this watch out for me for review. I really appreciate that. Keep a lookout for more videos on this watch. I'm going to be putting out different types of content. Uh, another great website to check out is watchyouseek.com. And I want to thank you again for your support. Thanks for watching, and you have a great day, and stay safe.